Okay, so this is an Adobe Illustrator tutorial about using the blob brush and the blob brush with a tablet in conjunction with the eraser tool. So here we are on Illustrator, and always remember that you can go to the help, not Illustrator help, but Illustrator Support Center, and that will bring you to the web where you can always find out more information about any anything to do with this program. It's been a long time since uh, Adobe shipped a paper manual with their products, but they've had a manual so to speak on the web so here I am looking at a gallery of the tools and there's the blob brush tool keyboard shortcut shift B and you can read about it here basically it draws fills and they blob together with adjacent fills of the same color hence the blob brush if you've ever used flash it's a lot like the flash brush tool so here's another tab I have the uh, Illustrator online help and there's also a PDF version of it you can download if you're somewhere with a poor internet connection all right, let's go back to Illustrator. All right, so here we are back in Illustrator. I have the Essentials workspace, and I'm going to get my Layers panel and my Appearance panel. I'm a firm believer in making good friends with those panels and keeping them out where you can see them along with the toolbar here. So here's the blob brush on the uh, toolbar. It looks like a... Uh, rectangle and a circle merging together with a brush on top. So I'll just select that. And you can see right now that I have a fill color and no stroke, but as soon as I start making some marks here, it jumps over to the stroke color. So even though this is actually drawing fills and I can select one of them with the uh, black arrow, the move tool, and I look over here in the appearance panel and sure enough there's a path with a fill and no stroke and you can see it jump back over here to uh, a fill color because that's what's selected. But if I get that blob brush again, jumps back so over to the stroke color. I don't know. I think they just do that to confuse us. There you have it. So I'm going to go to outline mode right now. View outline mode or command Y. And you can see that these are fills, right? So here I am blobbing them together. That's the name blob brush. And so you can see my... Uh, number of paths there my layers panel are decreasing because as they blob together now I'm down to two paths boom there we go down to one path because they all blob together to make one big Pangea path here all right so I keep adding to it so the blob brush paints fills but it's looking at the stroke color and if you have uh, paths of the same fill with no strokes getting in the way so like if I make a rectangle here so right now, that just made a stroke rectangle. So if I go to outline mode again, if I get that blob brush, you can see that it's not merging with that rectangle because that rectangular square there is just has a stroke on it, no fill, even though that stroke is the same color. But if I was to, here I'll go to preview mode so you can see this again. If I was to take this rectangle and switch it from a stroke to a fill, so now this is a filled uh, rectangle with no stroke on it, right? You can see it swapped over here to uh, fill. And I go back to outline mode. There's still separate pieces right now, but separate paths. But if I get the blob brush again, and again, this is, has to be the same color, I can blob it together just like that. All right. So here's another thing. When I uh, have a negative space, you can look here in the layers panel right now. It says it's a path. But as soon as I make a little island space, an enclosed area, it becomes a compound path. So a compound path is actually more than one path treated as one path. That's how Illustrator thinks about it. Let's see, so if I was to, let's go back to preview mode. So you can see here I've got these empty areas that are complete islands, right? And it's a compound path. And you can always make a compound path by just manually having a few separate paths like these and selecting them and go to object compound path make and that'll that's one way of making a compound path right so that's now treated as one entity or one path in illustrator but in fact it's actually more than one path just being treated like one and this is useful for quite a few operations in illustrator but it's good to remember that you can always in addition to being able to go back here to the compound path and release it just as easily as you can make it, you can also double click on it with your move tool, your black arrow, to go into isolation mode. 
just like you would in a group and be able to change the and edit those separate paths easily. It's the same thing with this compound path. I can double click on it to go into isolation mode again and I can select these interior paths. You can see they do some uh, interesting things here when you move them around but it's just my way of saying uh, you know be aware of whether you're making a compound path or a regular path because there are some tricks and one of them is is that when you go into isolation mode you can select these other paths that make up the empty areas and you can just simply delete them which is a very effective way of making filled in shapes so and don't forget to get out of isolation mode you can click up here but you can also just kind of double click off to the side onto nothing that's a good way of getting out of isolation mode so it's a good way of being able to fill in shapes when you're using the blob brush. Oops, blob brush. You can see that's just a path, still just a path. But as soon as I make that enclosed empty area, it becomes a compound path. So what you can do with this technique is you can make the perimeter or the silhouette and double click to go into this isolation mode, select the interior path, hit delete, and then double click to get out of it again. It's still calling it a compound path because, you know, it's confused, but it's a good way of being able to fill in areas. You just have to make sure they're enclosed first. All right. So I'm using a tablet here. So to take advantage of some of those tablet qualities, we're going to need to set up the preferences. You can see right now, this is a completely uniform line I'm making, but if I double click on the tool on the toolbar, I can get to the blob brush tool options. So um, there's a few things here, like keep selected, merge only with a selection. The main thing we're going to talk about is so fidelity and smoothness. So the lower the number, the closer it will be to the actual marks that you make. And the higher the number, the more kind of uh, abstracted it, or the more Illustrator kind of has its way with the resulting fill. So if you want to be more like the marks you make, you know, set that number lower. Same with the smoothness. All right, down here, the default brush options. You can have like a calligraphic brush effect by smooshing this down and changing the angle of it. I'm just going to leave mine round. So here's the size. You can change the size here, but you can also easily use the brackets, as I'll show you in a minute, keyboard shortcut to uh, change the brush size on the fly. And the angle, it doesn't really matter if you're keeping it round. All right, so let's um, talk about size for a second. So we are going to have to set this to pressure if we want to take advantage of the pressure sensitivity of our tablet. So we have to set that to pressure. And if we want it to get thicker or thinner, depending on how hard we press, we need to make sure there's some variation. If you have that variation set to zero, uh, even if you have this set to pressure, you will not get any variation. Here, I'll show you. See? Even though I have that size uh, set to uh, pressure, it's not giving me any variation because there's no variation here. So what I can do is I can crank up that variation. You can't go any higher than the actual size of your brush. But once you've set up that relationship, it doesn't matter what size your brush is. It just basically says that you can have as much variation as your, the size your brush is right now. So if I say OK, now what I can do is I can get that variation depending on how hard it is that I press with my tablet. All right. So again, blob brush paints fills. If the fills are the same color, they will blob together. If they are different, they will not. If they are a different color, they will not blob together. If they have a stroke around them, they will not blob together. They must be the same color and not have strokes in the way. Okay. You can see that blue did not merge with the orange there. All right, there we go. And then the other thing is, to be able to take advantage of the pressure sensitivity of your tablet, you need to go into the tool options, the blob brush tool options, by double clicking on the tool in the toolbar and making sure that you uh, have the size uh, set to pressure and the variation set to something greater than zero to see any uh, variation in your stroke. I usually just crank mine up all the way up. Okay. Now the eraser tool right under it is, it's going to work a lot like the blob brush, but in reverse. So if I double click on it, I can get to the eraser tool options. And just like the blob brush, I can set the size to pressure. And I need again to put variation up. So you can see here that you can't have any more variation than you have point size. If I was to increase this, then I'd be able to increase the variation as well. But essentially, you just kind of set up that ratio. 
And then once you've done that, you can use the brackets next to the letter P button on your keyboard to uh, make them smaller by pressing the left one or larger by pressing the right one. If you've used uh, the brush tool in uh, Photoshop, it's the same keyboard shortcut for making your brushes larger and smaller. So let me go to outline mode for a second. You can see that it is chomping away at those fills. See? So even if I go into that interior here, depending on how hard I press. So note also that when I do go through one of these um, fills, here I'll delete these extra ones so we can see better on our layers panel. So right now I've got one path here. Uh, Shift E is the keyboard shortcut for the eraser tool. If I go through it, if I cut in half like that, I just made two paths. I just made three, back to two, right? So once I cut it up, it's making more paths. So next, let's, uh, let's go back here to the internet. Let's talk a little bit about um, breaking these photos down into shapes. So Caravaggio is a very influential painter uh, during the Renaissance. He really kicked off a whole style movement. His big thing was modeling with light and shadow. So you can see here in this painting that he's using light to kind of sculpt the form. So he's breaking down the face, nice graphic shapes based on that strong light. Now, another well-known artist, still Shepard Fairey, at his Obey Giant website. If I go to his gallery, print archive, I can look at any number of these um, silk screens he's got here, and you can see that he too is breaking down photographs into these graphic shapes of dark and light. He's using a middle value there, but that's not something we're going to do for this exercise. For this exercise, we're just going to do um, positive and negative shapes. So anyway, that's kind of the idea what we're going for, is to take a photograph and to break it down into graphic shapes. I've got this uh, photograph. I... Uh, took it myself, not looking too sure. I usually like to use uh, photographs of like old movie stars from the 30s and 40s and stuff, but I figured for this tutorial I stick with something I know I own the copyright to. Alright, so for this tutorial, you could do this with a pen tool, but um, I like this as a way of introducing the blob brush with a tablet. Also, it's a good way, I think, for people who are more comfortable with drawing than with computers to kind of get the hang of making vector artwork. So here I am in the layers. You can see I've got layer one has got my photograph on it. And if I double click on the little uh, thumbnail there, not on words, but on the thumbnail, I'll get to the layer options. So I can just call this like reference or something, but I can also make it a template layer, which will give it some properties like being able to see it in outline mode. And it'll also allow me to dim the image back. By default, it's gonna be 50%. I usually like it not that knocked back because I need to be able to see that contrast. So I'm just going to say OK. You can see it graded out a little bit. Perhaps one of the best things that it does is it allows you to go into outline mode and still see your photograph, where photographs by default, if they're not in a template, are just going to be appear as rectangles. What we're doing now is we're looking to break this down into positive and negative space, um, black and white. So I've got my blob brush. I'm going to use my brackets to make the brush size a little smaller and then I'll just start finding a, finding an edge to um, start following. So this gets to the idea of translation. You're not so much copying the photograph as you're translating it to this different medium more graphic. Breaking this down, trying to find those strong lines of shadow and you know you can't put everything in there. You gotta edit and you have to invent some. Like if I don't invent anything, this will all just get totally blacked out. But I don't really want that. I want to uh some details in the dark, so I'll kinda carve back into it with some negative space. Try to see if I can pull out some of those details. Yeah, I'm really not looking too sure about this in this photograph. Am I kind of furrowing my brow and everything? So the top lip is an overhanging plane, so it's gonna be in shadow where the bottom lip is an upward facing plane so it's going to catch more light typically with an overhead light setup sure about this. so remember making the compound paths i can take my uh, move tool and i could double click on this compound path to go into isolation mode and select that interior path and then it's filled in so no scrubbing with the blob brush with that trick so for that uh, compound path trick to work. You have to make sure that it's an enclosed shape. If it's open even a little bit, it's not going to work. You have to be able to cleanly select that interior path. And then 
double click off to the side, move around. Remember that the um, space bar is your temporary pan, and space bar and command on a Mac is going to uh, give you the temporary zoom in. Space bar, temporary pan, space bar, command, temporary zoom in, space bar, command, and option or alt, temporary zoom out. So that'll allow me to uh, stay in the blob brush and still be able to navigate around. I'll just work my way around. I'm sure I'm going to speed this up in the uh, final tutorial because there's no way that I'm going to make you sit through all this in real time, but you just take your time. <laughs> 